Association of the Eastern Caribbean States in supporting my participation, and that is to the IOC. Um, today, I will talk with, to you about um, oceans governance and the importance of marine spatial data, and also how it's, it ties into the CMA, and hopefully this would forge greater collaboration. Um, <clears throat> sustainable ocean governance is something that is very new for the OECS, um, when I said new in terms of the implementation. <coughs> But ocean governance, uh, we have recognized that under the framework convention of the law of the sea, provide each of our member states, of which all of them are members, that is nine members, and currently we have one to join, uh, gives us the rights and the responsibilities under Article 56. That leads us to something like this, which is an academic exercise, but at least gives us an, an indication. Once our, once our countries have delineated their boundaries, nine of them, um, we, we can see that they're sitting side by side, but also collectively they would have about 404,000 square kilometers. Now, I must uh, make a disclaimer here. This is not the actual boundaries of our member states, but this is just an academic exercise. Um, under this, we have recognized that we are sitting side by side. We share the same governance um, mechanism, that is the revised treaty of, of uh, Bastyr, um, establishing the economic union. We have recognized we have a limited capacity in terms of human. We've recognized we have limited resources. And given these commonalities, it makes a lot of sense for us to pursue ocean governance at, at a, a regional level. It is also recognized that once our countries have delineated our boundaries, some of our member states have as much as 70 to 90 times more marine space than land. Now, this is an incredible real estate for us because for us as small island states, it is the last frontier for greater development. Now, in 2012, before I, I assumed portfolio responsibility at the OECS, and we have Peter Murray here who has championed uh, the Eastern Caribbean Regional Ocean Policy, which give us the framework of which we pursue our agenda of sustainable ocean governance. This was approved in 2012, and under that ocean governance, the competency fell to the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, the Commission, and by extension, the Ocean Governance Unit, which, of which I had. Under that ECROP, which we fondly call, there are seven priority areas, and I should just add that for a time. And these are the priority areas, and under the priority areas, we have a number of goals upon which we are setting out to achieve these, these um, priorities. Um, now, with relevance to the spatial data, ma ma maritime boundary delimitation is the priority for the OECS. We have recognized that we cannot move further or to the, the level that we want to if we do not know what we have. We cannot manage what we don't know. So we are making an effort to <coughs> ensure that boundary delimitation um, is pursued. Currently, we are delineating boundaries among our member states with the intention that we build capacity, then we would move on to third state, which is CARICOM, but also countries like Venezuela, who also have uh, um, some form of boundary with our member state. We also have, um, so you would recognize that maritime spatial information is very important for us in that regard. We also have as one of our priority goals is the assessment of our marine protected area. Many of you would recognize when uh, TNC made a presentation yesterday, spoke briefly of the Caribbean Challenge Initiative. Many of our member states are also part of that, but we have recognized that but maritime, um, marine protected areas is very, very important to us if we are to ensure uh, the, have the biodiversity are, um, are, are managed in, such, in, in a way that is sustainable. We also recognize that if we are going to go towards the whole blue economy concept, we must be able to quantify the resources. That large marine space, we do not really know what is in there, um, both um, non-living non and also living resources. At least we know some of our fisheries, but also we don't have a handle on that. We also recognize that it would be very important for us to ensure that we, that we reduce conflicts among the many users of the ocean space, and that is ocean and coastal zoning becomes very, very important for us. And also marine spatial, that is to look at the potential and future uses of the marine environment. 
but also in with regard to spatial data, the auditing of the marine data in, environment is very important. So those are the areas that I thought that is very, very relevant to what why we're here um, in, at this gathering. Now, relevant to the OECS, we have currently um, started some of our work, and we are in the process of devising a marine research strategy to support our work. We've recognized that we want to ensure that science is our policy is grounded in science. No longer do we have the, 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 the option of just, just do work because we want to do, but we want to make sure that, our, that our, our policy are supported by informed decision making and that is through science. So we are, we've also recognized that we are now exploring that large marine space that we must ensure that research protocol, et cetera, are now in place so that we can ensure greater governance of the marine space. Secondly, we, we are currently undertaking a hydrographic scoping study of which um, all our countries have signed on to the Convention on Safety of Life at Sea, um, and under that convention there is a requirement that by 2015 all the countries should have electronic charting system. Now the UKHO, which is the United Kingdom Hydrographic Office, is the primary charting authority for the OECS, and we have partnered with the UKHO and with the Commonwealth Secretariat to update our navigational chart. Now, in order for us to do that, we have to ensure that we have greater bathymetry and hydrographic data. So we're in the process now of doing the scoping study where we are going to all our member states. I have just completed number six, where we're going to all our member states to do a hydrographic audit. What we wanted to know is what is there in the member states in terms of data, whether or not they have a national spatial data infrastructure if there are plans to, but also what are some of the capacity they have in-house. We are hoping at the end of, um, say, November, we would have a hydrographic audit of all our member states, of which we will now use, to and, on, and in that audit would have some of the survey priorities that we would want to undertake. That is hydrographic survey priorities. And we're hoping that this goes back to the heads of government in November for great for further endorsement, and this would propel us to a phase two where we would <laughs> conduct that um, the hydrographic study. Now you would you would um, recognize, ladies and gentlemen, that something of that magnitude is very very expensive. So we have put perhaps about thirty to forty million dollars. So that is something that is uh, is a project that that we. Um, are really keen on getting off ground. We also, in that phase, we are hoping to have a hydrographic research um, unit, uh, uh, sorry, a hydrographic unit of where we have recognized that once we have done some of our survey, we want to continue to survey that large marine space because it's all towards the blue economy. Um, we've also recognized that, um, that in the OECS, we have data being gathered, but it's just been gathered for that purpose. And sometimes we can't even use the data. So you go to some of our member states and you see, for example, there's a lovely map. When you ask, where is the base data? They don't have it. So we want to ensure that we start this whole, um, this whole drive to where we collect once and use many times. Now, you would recognize that if we have to, to collect data to upgrade, update our navigational charts, that has been collected at the highest order. So we want to ensure that also we, we we accompany this with greater standards, so we would have an OECS standard for data collection that this could be used within our member states. So these are some of the activities that we are currently undertaking that I think that really find um, great synergy with the CMA initiative and also at larger the CLME. Um, now, where do I see the OECS with the CMA? I can I can see greater collaboration, and I can and I hope that my my last few slides has also driven home the point. Um, the, or the CMA could be used as a platform for OECS data. We have a large number of our member states, and I think that, that I would personally like to see a, a platform where we can all go to, to access data. Even if we don't have the data, we can have some form of geo-indexing so that I can know what is there. Um, I should also say that under the, uh, the hydrographic scoping study, it is our intention to also have a platform, a regional platform for our, for our bathymetry data. Ladies and gentlemen, you would, uh, you would 
um, agree with me that, that that data is being collected at a higher, would be collected at the highest order, therefore the space is very, very, uh, would be critical. So we also want to, to build that, that infrastructure within the OECS. Um, we also see that there is greater, great opportunity for data sharing because many of, of what you are doing is also what we want to do. And we do not want to duplicate any efforts. What we want to do, because we don't have the resources, what we want to do is to find greater partnership and make sure that whatever we, we, we do, it's upscaled to the level that it's sustained. Um, so pretty much that's it, but I just want to pause here to just add to you that, that, that when work is being done in the Caribbean area. And you know, I think it's time that we also um, look to see what is there. And for example, I would hope that the Caribbean Marine at last could also look at some of those information that's being gathered. And this is some of the work that I have been doing with a colleague of mine who is sitting, Mr. Asmet, um, who is sitting there, where we actually are looking at the um, the potential of oil spills um, in the Caribbean Sea. The Caribbean Sea is one of my area of interest, having undertaken uh, work in 2003 for my PhD, where I had looked and gathered information on the Caribbean Sea. So ladies and gentlemen, I hope that, well, I haven't seen a yellow dot. Um, I hope that this has set the perspective of the OECS, um, of the work that we intend to do, but also give you the, the, the um, the feel of what we would, where our greater collaboration. And I trust that the, the conversation can evolve from here on for a greater partnership with the OECS. We are open and, um, and we would be very, very happy for collaboration. I thank you very much. Thank you, Asha.